The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine with our video fishing forecast for Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. 2-23-23. I love those alliterative numbers. And how about this number? Six. As in six days to go before the start of the Garden State Outback Striped Bass season, winter flounder, as well. In fact, this time next week, we'll be reporting from the floor of the Atlantic City Boat Show that's running from Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, an exciting five day event, another great event in the Fisherman Magazine's region. And I hope to know at that point, maybe have some early returns from opening day striped bass. But this week, well, I'm off the road, back at my desk after a busy weekend at Edison and Oaks. Personally, I had a great time in Philly, the Oaks show anyway, the Philadelphia Fishing Show, Friday through Sunday. Sat in and, and coordinated these great seminars from outstanding speakers. Um, got to talk to a lot of great folks, uh, even updated my CETO membership. But I will say that in addition to all the great subscribers, the folks that stopped by the booth had a great time uh, talking about fishing. But I did have a, a little chance to do a deep dive and sit down for a deeper discussion with a couple of buddies as well. First of all, I sat down uh, for an audio podcast with my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. We'll hear from him in about 10 minutes. Um, but I also launched a brand new audio podcast exclusively for anglers in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, which I'm calling The Road. This podcast is an uh, interview format where we're gonna take our audio gear on the road to meet with various fishermen throughout the region, where they are, where they do their thing, where they fish, maybe where their businesses are. Um, you can find that on the podcast app that's on your cell phone, and you'll also find it over at Google Podcasts, which is podcasts.google.com. Just type the fisherman in the search bar and look for The Road, Ep 1, Episode 1, Nick Honachewski the host of Saltwater Underground. Now, he and I sat down and talked about old history. Uh, we talked about his brand new show, Saltwater Underground. We also discussed a little bit about that outstanding fall 2022 striper bite. We started talking a little bit about tactics. It's about 40 minutes long. I did some searching on podcasts, and that's about the sweet spot. So I'm going to stick with keeping around 40 minutes for this podcast as we continue this down the road, on the road, exclusively for you subscribers of the Fisherman Magazine and anglers in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. So it's perfect length for taking with you as you drive back and forth to work, uh, maybe as you're driving, cruising back and forth to, the, uh, to the, the, the local reef sites on your boat, or maybe just kicking back at home with a cup of coffee or maybe even something stronger. You'll always find this weekly video forecast, by the way, in audio podcast form at those same exact locations. So if you wanna take us on the road, you certainly can. Now, if you're looking forward to gearing up for March 1st striped bass in the Garden State, make sure you pick up the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Right after uh, Sunday's show in Oaks, PA, went back to the hotel, we put the whole thing together, and yeah, we've got the brand new edition of the magazine printed up on Sunday night. You should be getting that in your mailbox. You can look for it. Uh, later this week, sometime this week at the at newsstands, Wawa, tackle shops, and other places. But again, you want to get that delivered to your home uh, through a subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. It's only $29.95. Now, if you want to sign up, if you want to subscribe at the AC Boat Show, that would be terrific. It's a good move because I will once again, uh, John DeBona and myself, I think Jenny Ackerman's going to join us out there, Captain Bob Bolger. Uh, and also Tom P. from Rack and Fin Radio will be with us at some point next week in Atlantic City. Hook you up with your BKK hooks as well as your Fish Bite Fight Club baits for that new and renewing subscription. You'll also get the chance to win a set of wide trackers from Sterling Tackle. That's happening at every show. 
Congratulations, by the way, to Joe Mazza of Old Bridge and Lamar Meekins of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who I met at the Pennsylvania show over the weekend. They were the winners, drawn at random, for the Sterling Wide Tracker over the weekend. Uh, Joe was picked at random at the New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo. Lamar picked at the Philly show. Uh, someone from Sterling will be getting in touch with you on how you can get your Wide Trackers. And again, we will be giving out another Sterling package next week in Atlantic City. You can visit us next week and I'll have the full update then. We have two booths. Right at the beginning of that vendor marketplace number 147 and also I'll be back near the seminar area uh, booth number 726. Be there all weekend uh, to let you know what's going on with those seminars because we've got a great lineup in place. Now back to that monthly edition that's out this week. Nick Honachewski does have a March 1st Stripers right out of the gate article. He'll share with you the baits, the tactics, and help you find the locations in those back bays, along those sedges, sod banks, and river banks to find yourself a striped bass next week. Other great features in this month's edition include a primer for toggers in the month of March when Blackfish closes in the Garden State. Frank Mahalik's already eyeing up his April reopening. Tom P. does have a story on the Charles O. Hayford hatchery in Hackettstown. We have a deep dive into marine electronics with Captain John Raguso. Also, a couple of great features, one on building, one on fishing glide baits, also rod repair on the fly. We've got the internal local edition, the glossy, it's all there. We also have an update, a great story from Alan Riley. Uh, that we're looking forward to handing out in the month of March. It's all about fishing clubs in New Jersey. So a com complete listing of all the clubs that we could track down uh, throughout the Garden State, the Tri-State region really. If your club is not listed in that article, I'll update it on the website. Just drop me an email, which you'll find in the March edition. My email address is in there. One fix in the March edition. We'll be finding out more about fluke sea bass and porgies on March 2nd when the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meets in Galloway. The state website had originally had Stafford Township as the meeting place for next Thursday, March 2nd. It's actually at the Atlanta County, uh, the Atlanta County Library. That's the uh, Atlanta County branch of the library there in Galloway. That's at 306 East Jimmy Leeds Road. I'll try to send an email reminder next week. I will be there. I'm gonna leave Atlantic City a little early because we're all chomping at the bit to find out what's up with fluke and sea bass. We will know next Thursday. Now I did say New Jersey TOG is on a month long pause as of February 28th. It's actually as of March 1st. We can fish for TOG through February 28th. At this point, the head boats that are still sailing for TOG over the next few days include the Ocean Explorer out of Belmar, the Dauntless out of Point Pleasant, which is also getting some cod, as is the Paramount over in Brielle. Of course, the big Jamaica, is also running mid-range wreck trips, 20 to 35 miles out. They've been getting on the cod in those, uh, those particular wreck sites. So they'll be running for cod this Saturday and Sunday, both days, leaving at 4 a.m. Down in Delaware, check in with the folks at Lewis Harbor Marina for boats that are sailing there, but things have gotten quiet on that front. I did see Captain Jamar and the crew of the, uh, the JC2 out of Lewis. Uh, out at Oaks over the weekend, and I believe that Jamar said he was running his final winter trip of the season on Wednesday, but will gear up again for spring. I hope to check in with him a bit this season, because we are, of course, in this transitional time in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region right now, February into March. White perch in the rivers, creeks, and tributaries getting most of the attention for bloodworm soakers. And thus far this winter, it's been mostly, uh, you can get your bloodworms at True World in Bayonne, Hook House in Tom's River, and Dave at Absecon Bay, um, the Absecon Bay Sportsman Center, keeping the blood stocked. But expect most of the Jersey Shore tackle shops to begin opening their doors more often next week with a fresh supply of jumbo bloodworms. As Mainers, like my friend Wayne Bishko, are digging worms as quickly as possible for striped bass and winter flounder next week. I do know the folks in Lewis Harbor have had um, green, um, green crabs for toggers, and most of the time Smith Bait in Leipzig has been trying to get those blood worms in place. But again, next week, the transition to spring, even though it's not officially spring, that's where we're gonna be looking. So you can get more baits in a lot of those shops 
will begin opening their doors, will end the winter doldrums, start seeing more reports from those tackle shops throughout the region. American Shad, they'll begin to run soon as well. Um, and with milder temperatures, you can expect those little speedsters to begin showing up along the Delaware River sometime in March. Don't know how early, but we are doing Shad Watch 23. That's right. That's the news from my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, I think we're going to have to adore a little bit of that seasonal temperatures for the next few days as a cold front moves through. You know, we might get a little bit of lockjaw with those fish, but, you know, I think that's only going to be short-lived as the season is starting to kick off pretty good and that weather is starting to warm up. You know, I had some guys check in, really good catches so far. We had Joe Wasco. Well, he's been fishing my home lake, Beltsville, and he's actually been getting out a few stripers on some jerk baits already, so good pattern developing there. Also throwing them, he's been able to get into a few large mouth so some good fish in there patterns starting to develop guys we got to get out there and start throwing them also John Waters well he was out fishing Glen Rock Pond uh, he was throwing a jig and he kept losing a few bass so he threw in a, a drop shot with a night crawler and managed to snag that sucker and got himself a 2.6 pound large mouth for, for his effort so great work there also in the upper Delaware Rich Bates well he was out catching a mess of brown trout he's doing it from a kayak a little bit chilly for the kayak right now but the guys are out being successful lots of fish to be had so we're going to keep on top of the bite and keep you guys in the loop also starting next week i'll be starting up our shad watch so we can take a look at those fish as they migrate up the river you know we're going to start probably catching them mid-march so we'll keep an eye on that and keep you guys posted from pennsylvania i'm george your pocono outdoors guy this Saturday, February 25th, our friends at Ramsey Outdoors in Sukasana will host a kayak bass fest from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. featuring kayak pros like Charles Dougherty, Rich Topher, Keith Thomas, and the river smallmouth whisperer himself, Jeff Little. There'll be door prizes, raffles, and great discounts waiting for you in the fishing department to help you gear up for spring. That's at Ramsey Outdoors, their Sukasana location. On Sunday, you also have got that 27th annual Fisherman's Flea Market hosted by Ocean Fire Company No. 1 in Point Pleasant Beach. That's being held at the Antrim School at 401 Niblick Street there in Point Pleasant Beach. Doors open at 8.30 a.m. with over 100 tables of fishing gear. Admission is just $5 and all the proceeds go to benefit the Ocean Fire Company number one in Point Pleasant Beach. Now there was a pretty big turnout uh, in that coastal town this past Sunday, World Whale Day. Uh, probably about a thousand people turned out for the protest of sorts, calling for more research into this industrial whale, uh, the, the industrial wind project and the dead whales at the Jersey Shore. Now despite what you may have heard from the wind industry lackeys, the event was actually organized by local activists and concerned citizens Le Leslie Mangold and Trish DeVoe. Well done. We did have some congressional appearances there at that meeting. See, I wrote up a, uh, a dead whale summary this week at thefisherman.com. There's also a smaller blurb in the report section. Rushed that in Sunday night right before uh, we went to print with that March edition. But in both of these news briefs, You'll see I did receive a response from Andrea Gomez of NOAA Fisheries, who I had on camera in last week's video fishing forecast. NOAA says it does appear as if a ship strike caused the death of that 35-foot humpback at Manasquan last week. Now on Friday, while I was at the Philadelphia Fishing Show, another dead whale washed up on the beach in New York, a small minky whale. And then by Saturday, a trio of common dolphins beached themselves on the backside of Sandy Hook, where they too regrettably perished. Now, working while working that Philadelphia fishing show on Friday, I also received this update from the office of Congressman Jeff Van Drew from South Jersey. He's vice chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee on Capitol Hill. That's the committee that oversees the U.S. Coast Guard and maritime trans, uh, transportation, as well as water resources and environment. The congressman from Cape May announced that he'll be hosting what I believe will be a field hearing, a congressional field hearing in the district on March 16th to hopefully get more information uh, in front of the public, this time going before Congress, right? But on any impacts that pre-construction and perhaps post-deployment of those industrial wind farms may have 
on fish, on marine mammals, and of course, on our local fishing community. Now that very same day, Congressman King, uh, Chris Smith, who represents Point Pleasant, Point Pleasant Beach, and Brick Township, he also announced new legislation requiring an immediate and comprehensive investigation into the environmental approval process for offshore wind projects. Now, Smith's bill would require the Government Accountability Office, the GAO, that's commonly known as the Congressional Watchdog on Capitol Hill. This legislation would require them to investigate the sufficiency of the environmental review process for offshore wind projects, including impacts on whales, fin fish, all marine mammals, benthic resources, think fluke, commercial and recreational fishing, as well as vessel traffic, tourism, and the sustainability of shoreline, beaches, and inlets. Now, whether you're pro-industrial wind or wildly against, and regardless of what you think may be the cause of these unusual whale mortality events at the Jersey Shore, it sure would be nice to see a congressional review of the transparency from federal agencies that greenlighted this aggressive offshore wind uh, process, uh, this aggressive offshore wind development. Uh, how much scrutiny went into that? How, how much did we review the environmental impacts and marine safety of these projects? These are the words of Congressman Chris Smith who said, quote, given its unprecedented size and scale, all these offshore wind projects, this is not five wind turbines up in Block Island, this is 500 of them across hundreds of miles at the Jersey Shore. So there's nothing wrong with a little more research and congressional oversight of government agencies who approve these large-scale vessel-based site assessment surveys using high-resolution geophysical equipment. Folks, don't forget to register to fish marine waters in 2023 in the Garden State. If you registered last year and you didn't yet this year, you have to. You have to do it every year. It's free, but it's required. Go to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. I have more on the saltwater registry and meetings inside the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection right now. They're happening this week. There's another one on Friday. No, I don't get an invitation. I'm not on the Christmas card list. But there are a few groups who have been invited into Trenton this week to talk to the commissioner of the DEP about a saltwater fishing license. I have more on that in my editor's log in the March edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Pick that up. It's got all the news, calendar of events, and of course, all those tactical uh, articles that you need to gear up, especially in advance of the March 1st opening of striped bass. That is in six days. Hope to have more information on that next week in Atlantic City at the Boat Show. I will see you there. Catch them up.